Hey guys, Byron here, and I'm excited to introduce to you something brand new to our church. We're calling it the seven minute sermon. What we're trying to do is take all the information that we talk about on a Sunday, bring it down to bite sized simple, relevant, and reproducible for you to continue to study uh, about the Bible and learn about Jesus and continue growing in your faith throughout your very busy week. So we came up with this idea to do a seven minute sermon, taking the content from Sunday, reducing it down to something that's very simple and easy for you to listen to, maybe on your way to work, maybe while you're getting the kids ready, or just over your lunch break. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, I wanna invite you, welcome you to our brand new segment called the seven minute sermon. So right now, here's what we're doing. We are in a sermon series through the Gospel of Mark. We're calling it the simple gospel because Mark tells us very quickly, very simply, who Jesus is. And that really is the most important question. So we're in Mark chapter 3. It's going to start in verse 1 through 6. I'm going to read it all, and then we will talk about it in just a minute. Here's what it says. Jesus entered in the synagogue again, and there was a man who had a shriveled hand. In order to accuse him, they were watching him closely, that's the Pharisees, to see whether he'd heal him on the Sabbath. He told the man with the shriveled hand, stand before us. Then he said to him, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. The Pharisees had nothing to say. After looking around at them with anger, he was grieved at their hardness of hearts, and he told the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. It's a miracle. Immediately, the Pharisees went out, and they started plotting the Herodians that they might kill him. So here's what we have. We have Jesus, the Pharisees, and a man with a shriveled hand. And Jesus here, he's actually going to get in a fight with the Pharisees over this situation and the Sabbath. Jesus is constantly getting fights with the Pharisees. We've seen it over and over again through Mark's gospel. Fights about fasting, about the Sabbath, about healing, about friends with sinners, and about forgiving other people's sins. Jesus is always getting in a fight with the Pharisees. And here we see it's over healing on the Sabbath. Now, normally what we see when we read this is we think, oh, it's a miracle. But really the story is so much more than that. It's not just about a miracle, it's actually about a murder. Because if you look down in verse 6, it says, They plotted with the Herodians on how they might kill him. This is a fight. And Jesus is fighting with the Pharisees. But if we're totally honest with ourselves, there's a little bit of a Pharisee inside of all of us. That anytime we judge someone and try to justify ourselves, anyone anyone tried to accuse someone and then make excuses for themselves, that is the beginning of becoming a Pharisee. You're on the road to religion, and there is a Pharisee inside of all of us, and Jesus came to fight our Pharisee. So what I want to do is I want to show you seven ways that you're a Pharisee and how we fight the inner Pharisee inside of all of us. So the first way that you are a Pharisee is that you say one thing and you do another. Okay, we all know this person. They say, this is what you need to do. This is what you should do. This is what you're supposed to do. But when it comes down to it, they don't really do anything or they do the exact opposite of what they tell you to do. And this is so easy for us to fall victim to, especially in the age of social media, when it's so easy to click, like, share, retweet, subtweet, and get into an argument in the comment section. It's really easy for us to say one thing and do another. So here's how you fight your Pharisee. You ready? You need to be consistent. Consistency fights your inner Pharisee. If you say something, do it. All right, put some skin in the game, right? Get up off the bench. You know, if you're going to, you know, say this is what you stand for, actually stand your ground on that. If you say you're going to do something, you need to do it. James also talks about this where he says it's not just what you know, but it's also what you do. It's not just your faith, but it's also your works. Faith and works working together. The best way to be a Pharisee is to say one thing and to do another. So here's how we fight it. Consistency. The second way is that you practice your faith when people are watching. The Pharisees, they love attention. Everybody look at me. Everybody watch me. Everybody come see how holy I am. And in the synagogue, on the Sabbath, they're the holy people. But when they go home, their hearts are hard and they are filled with hate. You say one thing, you do another, and you only practice your faith when other people are watching. So here's how you fight it. You need to be vulnerable. 
Okay, your inner Pharisee hates vulnerability. Invite other people in behind the curtain and the false facade of your Pharisaicalism. Invite people in to share what's happening on the inside and don't only focus on what's going on the outside. So number three is this, that you lead people away from Jesus instead of to him. The Pharisees here wanted to keep the man with the shriveled hand away from Jesus. And they're supposed to be the gatekeepers of faith in the first century, but instead they're keeping people from him. You need to understand this. Everything in your life is leading people to or from Jesus. So when you go to work, at home, with your kids, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, college, wherever you're at, you're either leading people to Jesus or from him with the way that you live. So here's how you fight it. You need to be missional. Okay, everything you do is to point people to Jesus so we can lead as many people to Jesus as possible. If you want to fight your Pharisee, you need to be missional. Number four is you go beyond, your, go beyond the Bible with your beliefs. Here, what the Pharisees are saying is you can't heal on the Sabbath, but that's nowhere in the Bible. They went beyond the Bible with their beliefs. And when you do this, you get into some very weird, very strange, unbiblical, and helpful places. And so instead of going beyond the Bible, what we need to do is be faithful to the Bible. Okay, this is God's word. This word tells us who God is, what God says, what God does. He doesn't need your help by making up things outside of the book. Jesus never goes beyond it. Jesus never falls short of it, but Jesus is always faithful to it. So here's how you fight. Be faithful to the word of God. Number five is you make people feel unwelcomed in the church. Okay, so here the Pharisees telling the man with the shriveled hand, you're not welcome in the church. But what does Jesus do? Jesus says, hey, come up here, and then he heals the guy. While the Pharisees are being unwelcoming, Jesus is very welcoming. So the way that you fight your Pharisee is by welcoming other people and practicing hospitality. Your Pharisee hates hospitality. So if you see someone who you think they don't belong here, instead of judging them, what you need to do is stretch out your hands and welcome them because your Pharisee hates hospitality. Number six is that you don't love people who are in need. This man's hurting and the Pharisees, they don't care. Jesus, on the other hand, he cares. He loves those who are in need. And the Pharisee in you wants to overlook the people in your life who are in most need because it's uncomfortable, it's inconvenient, and it doesn't really serve you, and so you don't serve others. Here's how you fight it. You fight your Pharisee by being compassionate. Jesus spends his entire life hanging out with people that we tried to avoid. So what we need to do instead is we need to be compassionate, have a heart for what God's heart's for, see people the way that God sees people, love people the way that God loves people and you will fight the Pharisee with your compassion. And then lastly, number seven, is that you cover your sin instead of confessing it. Here, Jesus confronts the Pharisees. Is it better to do good, do good or to do evil? They're busted. They have been confronted with their sin, and instead of confessing, what they do is they try to cover it. They go with the Herodians and they plot to execute murder, kill Jesus, because they don't like to be wrong. So when you're confronted with your sin, what do you do? Do you confess it or do you cover it up? Do you get people to come over to your team, pat you on the back, tell you how great and awesome you are? They just say, oh, that was a mistake. That was a boo-boo. Nobody's perfect. You're going to be okay. Do you cover up your sin or do you confess it? See, the truth is this. If the Pharisees would have confessed their sin in the moment, Jesus, he would have forgave them. And here's how we need to fight it, through practicing repentance. Repentance fights the Pharisees. Repentance is the death blow to the Pharisee inside of you. So what we need to do is be practicing repentance. So here's my challenge for you this week. You want to fight your Pharisee. Here's what you need to do. You need to practice repentance in your life. You need to get alone with God, be honest with yourself about some of the things that are hindering you and hurting other people. Be honest about your hard heart. Give it to the Lord because here's the big idea is that Jesus, he can restore a shriveled hand, but Jesus can also replace a hard heart. Jesus came to get into a fight, and he wants to get in the fight with your inner Pharisee so you can be set 
free. Thank you so much for joining us for the seven minute message. I know it went a little bit over today, but hopefully the goal is we'll be able to bring it all down, get it into the seven minutes so that way you can listen and you can learn on the go in your life. My name is Byron. I love you. Uh, Grace and peace out.